Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about the concepts of vectors and how they are integrated into the topic of Calculus 3. And in this section, we're going to tackle the topic of vector value functions. Okay? So what we're going to do, essentially, is combine the concept of what you know a function is, which you've studied you know, all of your math life, practically, since algebra, and now your newfound ideas about vectors, and we're going to combine the two into what are called vector value functions. Now, up till this point, with the dot product and the cross product and the, um, the basic introduction to the vectors, you've probably been exposed to a lot of this already in your physics courses, at least to some degree. Okay? Now, in this section and then the follow-on sections from here on out, we're probably going to start to get into areas where you probably haven't tackled in uh, your physics classes at all at least most of you guys, okay? So we're going to start to try to do that here. So the way I'm going to open this section up is, how would you describe, using math, the path of a particle in three-dimensional space? How would you do that, the trajectory of a particle? Let's say I had a, 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 a BB here or, or a bumblebee. Or that's a good example, a bumblebee. And it's flying around zzz, everywhere, okay? It's going everywhere in three-dimensional space. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, sometimes towards you, away from you, all this stuff. It's painting a trajectory. Okay? Now, we know that we could define a function for that. Okay? We know that I could trace any, you know, any path and I could create a, a fancy mathematical three-dimensional function and represent that. Okay? But it wouldn't really give me much information with regard to, to the temporal aspect or the time aspect. In other words, we know the B starts here and we know he makes his way over there. But if you just create a spatial function like f of x and y, like a function of two variables or something, uh, giving you the third vector, or the, th the third value, your z value, you could plot a function like that and it would give you the path, but it would tell you really mathematically that the b started here and ended there. So we need something to do with time to, tell it, to be able to tell us this stuff, okay? So, how do we do that? We're going to use vectors, and we're going to use what we call vector-valued functions, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to motivate this by starting out with a picture, which I think is, is always the best way to do that if I can. So here's three-dimensional space. Here's x, here's y, and here is z, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to say that this b starts out right here, okay? He starts right there, okay? How do we define this point mathematically? Okay, obviously it has x comma y comma z. We know this, but we can use x comma y comma z and use it to define the tip of a vector, which is what we've been doing. Okay, so we can use this guy and we can say that okay, it starts at the tip of this vector, and what we're going to do is we're going to call this vector uh, r. Okay, we're going to call that vector r. In general, you're going to find that. Uh, uh, you're going to find that, that vectors that, that have a label of R in general are going to be position vectors. Okay? And so that's what I'm doing here. This vector has a position, uh, a, a vector R, and I'm going to call it R sub 1 because he starts at this point, so that he has R sub 1. Okay? Now let's say sometime later, okay, see this vector, this vector, don't forget, is a three dimensional vector, so to give you a Give you a feeling for where it actually looks in space, it's right there. Now let's say later on down the road, this guy flies around and around and around, and he ends up here. Okay, right there. And let's say that this guy is right in the plane, in the xy plane, let's say. Okay, right in the xy plane. And this b has flown from r1, he's flown over, over, around, and then finally lands down here. Okay? There. Now, how do I describe his final resting place? Well, I can just use another vector because it basically takes three numbers to form a vector, x, y, and z. So I'm going to use that guy there, and I'm going to call this vector r sub 2. This is vector r sub 2 because he's the destination, so he's got a 2 at the end of him there. Okay. So you see, the bumblebee starts here, and he flies around, and he ends up here. I use a vector to describe his initial position, which is just the tip of an arrow, and the tip of that arrow is described by the x, y, and z coordinates, we, and we know this, okay? And he flies around, and he lands someplace in his final destination. He's described by another vector, r sub 2, okay? And this vector has three points associated with it, x, y, and z, and uh, that describes the tip of this vector here. So as he flies from A to B, the vector, you can sort of imagine, if you will, a series of vectors that would trace out this path, okay? And as time marches on, time is equal to one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, the vector 
goes along this path, and the tip of that vector is what describes the path of the bumblebee. So what we're going to use is the tips of vectors to describe this guy here, okay? So the tip of R1 corresponds to point 1, the tip of R2 corresponds to point 2, and I'm going to write this down in red because it's important. The path, the path taken can be written as what we talked about before, just as in passing, a vector value function. Okay? Now, I haven't shown you mathematically what a vector value function is, but when you just think about what the words mean, what, what is it? A function, in general, is a mathematical thing where you stick something in, like if it's f of x, you stick x in, and you get some value back, f of x, right? So a function is something, you stick something in there, and you get something back, okay? Vector value means it has something to do with vectors, and since we have this picture here, you can kind of think about this vector is changing as a function of time, right? As time moves on, this vector actually moves as, a, as the bee moves, and the tip of this thing corresponds to the path that it's taken, so as time moves on, uh, this vector changes. So our function is going to be a function of time, because as time moves on, I'm tracing the path of this bumblebee. That's a called a vector value function. Obviously, it's vector value because at every point in time, I've got a new vector pointing to the current location of that bumblebee. That's why it's a vector value function. So how would you write that? Okay, The vector value function would be written like this. Vector f as a function of time, because we just said it was a function of time, Okay, is equal to some function of time in the i direction plus some function of time in the j direction plus some function of time in the k direction. So it looks complicated, but it really isn't that complicated when you think about it, okay? In the i direction, which is the x direction, okay? In the x direction, which is pointed down here, okay? As the b moves along, the x component of whatever vector, whatever vector you're at is going to be a function of time. As time marches on, the x component of, of whatever place you are is going to be governed by some function of time. The y component of whatever, wherever you're pointed is going to uh, gov be governed by some function of time. And the z component is also governed by a function of time. So by breaking it up into components like this, as time marches on, the components of this vector change. That's all it's saying. You start at R1, and as time increments, the components of x, y, and z change to allow it to march along any path you want until it finally ends up at the destination, okay? So all of these functions that we're going to talk about in this section are going to be functions of some variable we call it t for time because it just makes the most sense to think about. Some function and that of t that's going to be the component in the x direction, some different function of t in the y direction, some different function of t in the z direction, and that is going to let you pick any path you want in three-dimensional space, and that's why it's useful. Okay, so... Let's look at a real example of a vector value function to, to kind of...